Welcome to the Berean Bible class of Elkview Baptist Church. Welcome to the study for this lesson. Today we're looking at Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to share some things with you, or maybe introduce you to some new things about John the Baptist, or maybe more appropriately said, I'd like to share with you some of Christ's comments about John the Baptist. Some of them are pretty intriguing. And I would encourage you, I'm going to, if you want to pause the, the video now and read Matthew 11, 1 through 15, for this lesson, I'm going to kind of do pieces of the verses as we share the word with this lesson. So if you want to pause and read all 15 verses to get it in your thoughts, that would be great. But first, I would like to share with you from John chapter, um, Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. And this occurs after Matthew 10, where there was some uh, instructing of the disciples, both now and in the future. And then it transitioned with Jesus preaching in their cities. And then Jesus gets a message from John the Baptist. And we pick that up in Matthew chapter 11, beginning with verse number 2. And it says, And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? This is a really intriguing question by John because of his knowledge of Christ, and I'm going to share that with you through the lesson. So John's in prison, and you know what happens to John the Baptist a little bit later after his prison sentence by Herod. So first of all, let's make uh, uh, some observations about John the Baptist to get a little bit familiar with, again, who he is. John the Baptist, his father was Zacharias. He was a priest of the division of Abijah, so meaning he was a Levite. His mother was Elizabeth, a descendant of Aaron. So again, the priestly line. Uh, John the Baptist's birth was announced and his name provided by the angel Gabriel. That's in Luke chapter 1 as well as some of the other things there. Some other very uh, interesting things about Elizabeth, John's mother, was that she was a relative of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that's according to Luke chapter 1 verse 36. And also, Mary visited Elizabeth for about three months during her pregnancy with John the Baptist. And when that visit was taking place, Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, called Mary, well, called Mary's baby Lord. So another interesting thing, meaning Elizabeth knew who Mary's baby was going to be, meaning John the Baptist's mother knew that Jesus was Mary's baby and Lord. So just to, to think about that, some interesting things. And let's move on to the next slide. Uh, in Luke 1, the angel Gabriel makes several statements about John the Baptist. And most of those are pretty familiar. One was he would be great in the sight of the Lord, that he would drink no wine or strong drink, that in his ministry, he would turn many to God. And his task, part of his key mission, was to go before him, meaning to go before Christ, according to Luke chapter 1, verse 17. And let me go ahead and read from the slide, Luke chapter 1, verse number 17. At the bottom of the slide, it says, He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So in that particular verse, it's pointing out that John the Baptist was coming in the spirit and power of Elijah, not as Elijah. So uh, let's move on to the next slide, some observations about John the Baptist. Uh, his ministry was located mostly in the wilderness of Judea along the Jordan River. Uh, it's interesting that his food, according to Matthew 3, 4, was, consisted of locusts and wild honey. 
in his clothing. He was dressed in some camel's hair and had a leather belt, according to Matthew 3, 4. And I would make the observation there that that was somewhat similar to how Elijah was dressed and maybe where he ministered as well. So let's go on and make other observations about John the Baptist. One, it's really clear from Scripture that he was a prophet. And Luke 1, 76 calls him a prophet of the highest. And then let me read and share with you some more verses from the chapter we're in for today's lesson from Matthew chapter 11. And these are Christ's comments about John the Baptist. It says, but what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, am more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. So you can see there from Christ's comments about John the Baptist, he puts him up very high. He's uh, calling him more than a prophet. And we'll explore a little bit more why he called him more than a prophet. But let's move on to the next slide and make some other observations about John the Baptist. Uh, he wasn't just a prophet, he was also a preacher. Because if you look through the scriptures, you see that he went throughout the region of Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. That's from Luke 3.3. 3. And that, as we've read in Matthew, he's the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. That's from Luke 1, 16 and Matthew 3, 3. And he, his testimony about Jesus was such that he said, He who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's from Matthew 3, 3. So again, he's a prophet and he's a preacher, but he's also more than a prophet. Another thing that's intriguing about the relationship between John the Baptist and Jesus, John baptized Jesus in the recording of Matthew chapter 3. From verse 13 in Matthew 3, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And let's move on to the uh, next slide and read two more verses from Matthew 3. Verse number 16 says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. A voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And just to observe there, like a dove means in bodily form of some type. And that's from Luke 3.22. So as you think about what's going on here, I would pose some questions. Did John the Baptist see the Spirit descending like a dove? And I would say the answer is yes, because if you go over to John chapter 1, let's read verses 32 to 34 together. It says, And John, and here speaking John the Baptist, And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So in the words of John the Baptist, he's testifying that Jesus is the Son of God and that he saw the Spirit descend upon Jesus. And here in John chapter 1, uh, an observation that here we have the Apostle John reciting the testimony of John the Baptist as recorded in John chapter 1, verses 32 to 34. So let me ask another question. 
at Jesus' baptism in chapter Matthew 3, was God's voice audible? And I would propose that the answer is yes. From the context of the way it was given to me, it seems like it would have been yes. But the other two times in the Gospels that God spoke like this, for example, at the Transfiguration and as Christ approached the cross, both of those instances, it was clear from the text that it was an audible voice when God spoke from heaven. So I would conclude that at the baptism of Jesus, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, that John heard an audible voice, and it was we've seen he, he saw the Spirit descend. So two, two good questions to ask about John's knowledge about what is going on here. So then let's ask the really big question. Did John the Baptist know Jesus was the Christ? The answer is yes, he did. From very early in the book of John, from John chapter 1, verses 29 and 30, let me share this with you. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. So reading this verse and thinking about the other verses we've read, we know that John the Baptist, one, knew that Jesus was the Christ, that he saw the Spirit descend on Jesus, and three, he heard the voice from heaven confirming that Jesus was the Son of God. And then from John 1, 29 and 30 that we just read, John's testimony was that he was the Son of God, the Lamb of God. <clears throat> so John the Baptist knew who Jesus was and who he is. Now, let's ask another question. Knowing all the things that John knew, why does he ask in Matthew chapter 11, verse number 3, later in his ministry and later in the ministry of Christ, why does he ask the question, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And Jesus makes his reply from Scripture. In Matthew eleven five. Uh, Jesus' uh, response to John the Baptist is, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So that's Christ's reply to John the Baptist's question through his disciples. That's the evidence that Jesus gives John to say, I am the Christ, I am the Messiah. And of course, those words from Jesus were from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. If you look there on the bottom of that slide from Isaiah 35, 5 and 6, it says, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing. Then from Isaiah 61, 1, it says, the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. <clears throat> so it's clear that Jesus gave John the Baptist an answer that was from Scripture and that John the Baptist would understand the answer is saying, I am the Christ. So <clears throat> let me ask again. So why does John ask the question, are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Because, you see, from Scripture, we know that John the Baptist already knew the answer to the question. If you look at Luke 7, 18, John's own disciples came to him and reported concerning all these things, meaning John the Baptist knew all these things. So why does John ask the question? Well, remember where John the Baptist is at. He's in prison, and he knows already that he must decrease and Jesus must increase. So he may have been, a, been at a point in his life where he needed some assurance because he was facing the hour of death, and that may have been weighing heavily upon him. So Jesus gave him that assurance. So we know that in prison he was beheaded, 
at the word of Herod. So a word of comfort to John the Baptist from Jesus, his Lord. <clears throat> so let's address a couple more things that Jesus has pointed out here about John the Baptist. Jesus says that he's more than a prophet from Matthew 11, 9, and 10. Uh, and then he calls him his messenger. But two points. Point number one, John the Baptist was Jesus' messenger and forerunner. According to Malachi, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And we know that John came in the spirit and power of Elijah, but he wasn't Elijah. But he was that forerunner or messenger. And then number two, why was he more than a prophet? It says in Scripture, he prepared the way. From Isaiah 40, verse 3, it says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And that sort of mirrors Matthew eleven ten, 10, Jesus' comments about who John the Baptist is or was. And it says he's his messenger or the one who will prepare the way. So two points about why John the Baptist, according to Jesus, was more than a prophet. And then <clears throat> let's think more about Jesus' unique description of John. And from verse 14 in Matthew 11, Jesus says, And if you are willing to receive it, he is the Elijah who is to come. What that really means is if they're willing to receive Jesus as Lord, if they're really ready for the kingdom, then John would be the Elijah who is to come. But the reality is Jesus was rejected. Thus, according to these words, Elijah is yet to come, and even yet to come to us. <clears throat> and I would observe with you that John confirmed to the scribes and Pharisees that he was not Elijah. In John chapter 1, verse 21, it says, And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So John the Baptist clearly in Scripture says, I am not Elijah. But he is one who came in the spirit and power of Elijah. So you think, though, about Jesus' reference here to John and then the prophecy and I would observe with you from Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, the prophecy about Elijah. Let me share that with you. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And I believe that that prophecy in Malachi 4, 5 is fulfilled in the book of Revelation in chapter 11, verse 3. And let me share with you those words. It says, and I will give you power, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. So the 1,260 days is the first three and a half years of the seven year tribulation period recorded in the book of Revelation. So Elijah the prophet will come, and I believe he will be one of the two witnesses that are presented and, and shared in Revelation chapter 11 and that will testify about the Lord for three and a half years. So that's how that prophecy, I think, connects together. John the Baptist cl clearly came in the spirit and power of Elijah. He was not Elijah. Elijah will come, but he won't come until the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period. So, as we wrap up this lesson, because of these truths, we should, like John the Baptist, be assured that Jesus is the Christ. With all that I am, I believe that. And then we should live like Jesus is Lord. So, good truths to live by. So, thank you for participating in the lesson today. So, uh, let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, what a blessing it is to look into your word. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony of John the Baptist. And Lord, that uh, in a difficult hour, he needed a word of assurance from Jesus. 
And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave it. And Lord, we're like that often as well. And we thank you for the comfort that you give us. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen.